For his school project, Jim is preparing to construct a scale model of the Earth, the Sun, and the distance between. The sizes and distances are shown on this chart. The diameter of the Earth is about 8,000 miles. The diameter of the Sun is about 864,000 miles. And the distance between them is about 93 million miles. Jim had planned to use a scale in which one-eighth inch represents 1,000 miles. But Jim has become so discouraged trying to convert distances like 93 million miles into the scale's eighth inch units that he's about ready to give up the whole project. Then Jim's father makes a suggestion. Instead of using a common ruler with its clumsy eighth inches, inches, and feet, why not use this meter stick that he uses in his engineering work? It, too, is a kind of measuring ruler. Jim's father also shows Jim where to find more information about the meter stick. Jim learns that the meter is the basic unit of length in a system of measurement called the metric system. The meter stick itself represents the length of one meter, which is about a yard. Since Jim has decided to do his measuring with the meter stick, he wants to make a model of it to learn how it works. So he cuts a strip of cardboard one meter in length. Jim labels the cardboard strip with the word meter, followed by its abbreviation M. Jim notices that the meter stick is divided into several smaller units. There are very tiny units. There are larger numbered units. And there are units that are still larger. How do the sizes of these various units compare? To find out, Jim counts the largest of the units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten. Because there are 10 of these larger units in a meter, we can think of each of them as one-tenth of a meter. The word we use for one-tenth of a meter is decimeter. After he has marked the cardboard strip into decimeters, Jim labels one of the units decimeter and writes its abbreviation DM. As we have seen, each decimeter is also divided into smaller units. The numerals labeling these units tell us that there are 10 of the smaller units in a decimeter. How many do you think there are in a meter? Since there are 10 of the smaller units in a decimeter,
and there are 10 decimeters in a meter, there should be 10 times 10, or 100 of these smaller units in a meter. Jim counts them in groups of 10 to see. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Since there are 100 of these smaller units in a meter, each is one one hundredth of a meter. The word for one one hundredth of a meter is centimeter. Each centimeter on the meter stick has in turn been divided into still smaller units. How many of these smaller units do you think are in a centimeter? We have seen that there are 10 decimeters in a meter. We have also seen that there are 10 centimeters in a decimeter. This makes a pattern of 10 to 1. Using the pattern 10 to 1, we can predict that there should be 10 of these very small units in a centimeter. Count them and see. There are 10 in a centimeter. The pattern, 10 to 1, works. Jim divides one of the centimeters on the cardboard strip into 10 of the very small units. If a centimeter contains 10 of these very small units, how many does a decimeter contain? Since there are 10 centimeters in a decimeter, there should be 10 times 10, or 100 of these very small units in a decimeter. Let's count them in groups of 10 on the meter stick and see. 10, 20, 80, 90, 100. If there are 100 of these very small units in a decimeter, how many should there be in a whole meter? How many did we find are in a centimeter? 10. How many centimeters are there in a decimeter? 10. And how many decimeters are there in a meter? Ten. Do you see that this makes a pattern of 10 times 10? times 10, or 1,000? Let's count the very small units in groups of 100. 100, 200, 800, 900, 1,000, or 1,000. 
Since each of these very small units is one one thousandth of a meter, each is called a millimeter, a word meaning one one thousandth of a meter. Jim now makes a chart that shows the relationship between the decimeters, centimeters, and millimeters on the meter stick. The chart shows that one meter is equivalent to ten decimeters. One decimeter is equivalent to ten centimeters. And one centimeter is equivalent to ten millimeters. To put it another way, one meter is equivalent to ten decimeters, or to one hundred centimeters, or to one thousand millimeters. Since he is using the meter stick to build his model of the Earth and the Sun, Jim has made a new scale in which one millimeter represents a thousand miles. According to this new scale, the diameter of the model Earth is to be eight millimeters, since the real Earth is about eight thousand miles in diameter. The diameter of the Sun is to be eight hundred sixty-four millimeters. And the distance between the Earth and the Sun is to be 93,000 millimeters, or 93 meters. To help him find a sphere of the right size to represent the Earth, Jim sets the tips of his calipers so that they are 8 millimeters apart. After Jim has found a sphere of the right size to represent the Earth, he looks for the point on the meter stick that represents the size of the model Sun, which is to be 864 millimeters. Jim has found out that the measure, 864 millimeters, can also be thought of as eight decimeters plus six centimeters plus four millimeters. Just as the number 864 can be thought of as eight hundreds plus six tens plus four ones. This is because the metric system works just like our decimal system of numeration by which we write numbers. Jim now blows up the balloon that is to represent the 864,000 mile diameter of the sun. When he has finished, Jim checks the size of the balloon on the meter stick to make sure it is 864 millimeters in diameter. By comparison with the Sun, the 8 millimeter Earth model, which represents the 8,000 mile diameter of the Earth, is very small indeed. Jim now drives a stake and fastens the Earth model to it. He measures off the 93 meters which represent the 93 million miles that separate the Earth from the Sun. When he has finished measuring, Jim fastens the balloon, which represents the Sun, to another stake, and the model is complete. 
By using metric units for his scale, Jim was able to represent distances like 93 million miles very easily. Why do you think Jim found it easier to use metric units to represent these distances than it was to use eighth inches, inches, and feet?